Okay, welcome to another Ginger Math Petition video where I'm going to go through my predictions for the IGCSE Paper 2 0580. So, this is for the 9th of February 2022 and also for the exam on the 6th of May 2022 as well. Before I get started, then please do like and subscribe if you want this kind of content. So, please do let me know. Right, let's get started. So, I've got my Coke Zero here, so let's go through this one at a time. I've got my first of all topics of interest. So these are topics that do fall below the 6 in 13 papers that I generally look for, but still could be interesting to you. So for example, we have exchange rates as paid three times. So know how to change between say dollars and pounds, you'll be given the exchange rate. Highest common factor, lowest common multiple. Is it five out of 13? So it's certainly something to consider. And this can also include some algebra as well. So just be aware of that. Functions generally is more of a paper four topic anyway. So this is why it comes in quite low on paper two, but be aware of that. Uh, bearings, so I've seen one question where you actually have to draw a bearing yourself, but generally speaking, you just need to calculate bearings using angle facts. Differentiation, which I did a really great differentiation uh, video series for 0580. You'll see the link just here. Uh, but generally, it doesn't really come up on paper two, more a paper four topic and comes definitely towards the end. Transformations also fit into that category as well. And then we've got a couple of topics at the bottom here, ratio calculations and map scales, which they are on your course. Of course, you can't ignore them, but at the same time, they do not come up very often. So let's go on now to my sometimes topic. So slightly different to one of my other prediction videos I did, where I've divided this into sometimes, which I'll go through now, uh, almost certain, and then I actually have a certain category, and they've come up more than 13 times, therefore I put them into a, a different category. The first one here is sequences. So this is usually either in the form of a table, so they give you a table and then to work out various values, or as you see below, a work out the nth term style question. Generally speaking, these are usually near towards the start of the paper, so generally on the easier side, so for the lower grades. So here's a very good example of this, and you'd be expected to find the nth term of the sequence. Looking at the difference and then using that to work out the nth term from there. On to rearranging formulae. Now, they generally say either make something the subject, just like the question you see below here, or they'll say rearrange to make something the subject so just be aware of the language here and exactly what you're expected this kind of minor topic on the 0580 course comes up six in 13 papers so it is worth exploring and worth being aware of standard forms so i divided indices up into standard form as a separate topic and even on its own it comes up six in 13 papers now, you need to be aware of how to do the four operations here. So add, uh, subtract, multiply, and divide in standard form. And sometimes they'll get you to convert between standard form and ordinary numbers as well. So this question here, for example, this is an interesting uh, take on it, but they want you to work out, okay, this in standard form. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Be aware, again, this question comes in the middle of the paper, so this can go between sort of easy and medium on the difficulty. Venn diagrams, it comes up seven in 13 papers. As I said here, evenly distributed over papers two and four, and it will usually appear on one of them. So even if you don't revise it for this particular paper, it's often gonna come up on paper four. So make sure you revise this topic. This comes up most years in general and know your set notation. So what I mean by set notation is this kind of notation. So A intersection B, A union B, not A, and so on. So this kind of notation. So this is very, very important. As you can see, it can vary from one mark. It can also be a more extended question as well, sometimes tied in with probability too. On we go to non-geometric trigonometry. So I'll, I'll explain what I mean by this. So this is not trigonometry that's involved in shapes. So I'll talk about that later on. But usually it involves some kind of solving a trigonometric equation. Okay, and this is usually from the symmetry of a graph. So you need to know your sine graph, what it looks like, cosine graph, what it looks like, and the tangent graph. And these generally are the very hard questions at the end. Now you'll see the question down below here. 3 tan x equals minus 4, and you need to look for the solutions from that. The way you do this is get the tan on its own by dividing by 3 on both sides. 
and then you need to use symmetry of graphs to read off all the different solutions that you need. Comes up 7 in 13 papers, and certainly if you're looking for A's and A stars, this is a topic that could make the difference between an A and A star. Probability is always a big favourite of the IGCSE course, and it could appear on paper 4 and paper 2. There's been a tendency across uh, both courses, so 0580 and 0607, um, actually coming up more on these paper 2s. And you really do need to know how to work with a tree diagram. If you need any practice on that, then do check out the uh, video just above, where I, in 40 minutes I go through everything that you need to know on probability. You'll see a question like this where sometimes you need to use a tree diagram, sometimes you can just work out the probabilities directly. Circle theorem, so that's also a favorite again, very similar to what we said on Venn diagrams and probability here. It's often evenly distributed now over papers two and four. That means it could appear on both. And here, as you can see, question 13 is a very typical circle theorem question where you need to find a particular angle using the angle facts that you know. And inequalities, so it's something that can often get overlooked, so make sure you focus on this as a distinct topic. And it usually comes up in two different ways. And the last way I've mentioned here, shading regions using inequalities, has become very popular in 2021. So really do revise this. I've taken a question here uh, on inequalities that could come up. So what they expect you to do here is draw a line to represent the equality, and then you have to use the inequality afterwards to work it out. Again, do check the video, as you see, just in front of you now, if you want to go through that in more detail. And variation and proportion, again, a good favorite IGCSE as well. 18, 13 papers, so it's definitely towards the more certain uh, area of the course. And this is generally done bad, badly done by students. They often don't revise this. It's often missed in their uh, revision. And I would consider this an easier question to do. And you need to know your proportion equations from direct and inverse. So what I mean by this is you see inversely proportional to the square of y minus 2. So you need to be able to write this. Z is inversely proportional. So 1 over the square of minus 2 and then transfer that into an equation. So z equals some constant k over y minus 2 squared. This is the skill that you need to do. And from there, it's a very, fairly straightforward question. But you do need to be able to recognize what kind of question it is and form the correct equation. And upper and lower bounds. Now, this is often integrated into other topics, not always assessed alone. However, here as an example, I found you an example of where lower bounds and largest possible value, i.e. an upper bound, is actually asked for directly. So make sure you revise this. This can be tricking and it looks on the surface. So even though conceptually it's not too difficult, it is something that's overlooked. So make sure you revise this. Again, 7 in 13 papers, that's over 50%. That's something that if you want to get the good grades on this particular exam, please revise. And on to the almost certain category. So I've divided it into almost certain and certain. And speed distance time is the first topic here. And this can also take the form of a simple calculation. So they give you a distance, give you a time, work out the speed. Or, and I'm going to show you now more frequently, interpreting a speed time or distance time graph. So you really do need to consider what kind of graph you have in front of you, speed time or distance time, because you can interpret that differently. So you'll see the question here. This is specifically a speed time graph. So you'll need to take that into account for this particular question. And coordinate geometry, always a favorite, and it's 10 in 13 papers, not as much as in previous years, but still an important topic. You need to know how to work out a gradient, a midpoint, and the equation of a straight line in the form y equals mx plus c, or mx plus b. And this is very typical here. So they'll ask you to work out the gradient, maybe for a mark, and then they'll ask you some questions about that particular line as well. Please do revise this, 10 in 13 papers. It's an important topic to cover. On we go to solving equations. Now, generally, this can be divided up into normal linear equations, simultaneous equations, which I'm going to show you a question of here, or quadratics occasionally as well. And at the harder levels, they'll combine quadratics and simultaneous equations together. So you'll notice that towards the end of the papers. So this is a very typical simultaneous equation question where you need to multiply one of the equations or 
in sometimes two of the equations to actually get the y's or the x's the same. Generally, it's always done in an elimination method. It's the quadratics that involve some substitution. 11 and 13 papers, it's one to revise. On we go to vectors. So this comes in two main forms. Uh, one kind of question will be to work out the magnitude of a vector and just adding and subtracting vectors. Uh, but more frequently, particularly towards the end of a paper, uh, you'll see vector algebra. I'm just going to show you a question like that. So this is towards the end of one of the papers where they'll split the lines into certain ratios. This is very, very common. So here they're splitting ST and TV in the ratio 2 to 1. So to keep that in mind when you actually form these vectors, this is a very typical kind of question. On to statistics, which is quite a broad topic, but generally on the paper twos, they generally stick to either displaying data. So stem and leaf has come up quite often recently, which is essentially two, three easy marks. Box plots do come up from time to time, and I've seen the occasional bar graph as well, compound bar graph. And there's also the type of question which involves working out means in various contexts, either from frequency tables or working backwards, like the question you see in front of you now. So I saw this nice question on one of the 2021 papers, and I thought you'd appreciate having a look at this question. If you can do this kind of question, then generally you're pretty happy with how the mean works and operates. And now we're on to the certain category. And you know, I don't use that word lightly. And there are five or six topics that really do come up every year. Now, one of those is percentage calculations. These questions can vary quite widely. So they can go from a pretty straightforward equ uh, question, like on the board here, so question five, where they just want you to work out some simple interest or compound interest directly. But they can get quite tricky with some exponential growth and decay. So if you want to get the higher marks, you need to make sure you've revised how to work with exponential growth and exponential decay, depending on the style of question. Now we're on to indices, which generally speaking, you don't get many marks for compared to other topics that we're going to look at. But they can come up more than once on the paper and in different contexts. And at the harder end of this topic, you need to know how to solve exponential equations. So what I mean by that is something along this line. So you get this. And then you have to realize, OK, this is a bad example, but you can change 27 into 3 cubed, this idea. So be aware that's going to be the hard end of this particular topic. But as you can see, the more straightforward questions at the beginning just require your basic index laws, but also with fractional negative indices as well. A whopping 15 in 13 papers. So make sure you know this topic. Fractions, non-calculator, I'm sure, well, hopefully at home, uh, your teachers have talked to you about this. Uh, they generally put one question in here, which they state very clearly without using a calculator, work out a subtraction, addition, or division sometimes, uh, with fractions and you have to give all your working. So this is a very standard question on 0580. Be aware they also sometimes put in recurring decimals to fractions as well. So being able to convert, say, this, so 0 0.78, into 78 out of uh, 99, for example. So just be aware, this actually simplifies as well, of course, but this comes up quite often. Again, 15 and 13 papers overall with fractions. This is something you simply need to know. Angle calculations, and especially polygons. In the last two years, I, I don't understand it. They love interior and exterior polygon questions. I don't get it. They just I'm going through the paper, and there's another one, and there's another one, and there's another one. And it just seems to appear a lot. So if you don't know what these words mean, interior and exterior angles of polygons, look this up. This is very popular. However, on this side, the topics generally appear at the start of a paper. This is a good example here, question three, which just require your basic angle facts in order to work out missing angles. So it's an important topic to re uh, revise. Again, not too many marks, but it's one you know is going to turn up or in some shape or form. So make sure that you at home get those marks. And then we've got area and volume of 2D and 3D shapes, including similarity. And if you want to get the higher grades, so your your B grades, A grades, A star grades. This is the topic to revise because the questions are usually pretty big. As you can see this one, it's a four mark question. It's going to test a variety of 2D and 3D shapes. You need to 
know where that is in the formula booklet as well. Sometimes you'll need to work backwards through a problem. Sometimes they'll use similarity to find missing sides of a shape. And if you use the formula sheet and you practice these kind of questions, you can gain quite a lot of marks on the test. You can see here, in some shape or form, there have been 19 in 13 papers. That's kind of crazy. That is kind of crazy, almost one and a half in terms of how many it's going to turn up. And if it does turn up, you're going to get seven, eight, nine marks from this paper. 3D Pythagoras and Trigonometry. This has always been very popular on the 0580 course and hasn't changed generally towards the end of a paper. So they'll take some of the 3D shapes I've talked about on the previous slide and they'll get you to work out some various angles and sides from it. So this is very, very typical here. This is a square based pyramid and you need to work out the angle AV here that makes with the base. Very typical. This involves you using Pythagoras and trigonometry in 3D. Again, the key technique here is to rip out the 2D shape from it and then work it out separately. It's a really important technique and again turns up pretty much every year. And on to probably the most important topic other than the one we just looked at here which is factorizing and expanding and this also includes algebraic fractions as well. It's a massive topic. It can come in a variety of forms. I think this is a good example towards the end of the paper. So notice here you need to factorize top and bottom here. So you'll need to put it into uh, single brackets or double brackets depending on what you need. So if we take this example for example Because I want to do some maths in this video as well here. You put this into a single bracket. So we take a factor of 3x and One of the things you can do here, which is kind of sneaky in these kind of questions is you know There's going to be an x minus 4 factor in the top somewhere so you can simplify so This is kind of a sneaky trick that I thought I'd show you at the end of the video So you know that we're going to get a minus 4 an x minus 4 because we need some cancelling and then what do you multiply minus 4 by to get minus 12 well plus 3 and you'll notice that if you expand this out and just check the cross terms you'll actually get the minus 5x very sneaky trick and then at that point you can just cancel and get 2x plus 3 over 3x so there's a little tip from the ginger mathematician to make these questions a little bit easier okay if you like this video then do remember to give it a like okay, i want this um, advice and the analysis I've done on this paper to really you know, get to as many people as possible and I really appreciate your support on that as well. So let me know how you get to get on with the uh, predictions. Hopefully it's given you some guidance as well on exactly what to revise. See you on next video.